Welcome back to another video of CIA Backpack. Before we begin our today's topic, do not forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon to get further notified. Our today's topic is adenosine triphosphate, commonly known as ATP. To build on your concept, the first step is to know the structure of ATP. As illustrated in the diagram, ATP contains a sugar ribose, two adenine, and three phosphate groups, which are alpha, beta, and gamma. At the center, there is a 5-carbon sugar known as ribose attached to the three negatively charged phosphate groups. These negative charges make the molecule unstable. The bonds between the phosphate groups are referred as high-energy bonds. The breakdown of each bond releases up to 30.5 kilojoules of energy. ATP is the most important molecule in our body, as it is the only available form of energy, also known as the energy currency of our body. As discussed earlier, it is the unstable molecule and hence the instant source of energy. It is small and a soluble molecule, and so can easily act as an intermediate for endogonic and exergonic reactions, as it is easily transported intracellularly, meaning within the cell. In plant cells, it can easily be transported intercellularly due to the presence of plasmodes meta. As ATP is the energy currency of our body, so some other functions of ATP are active transport, muscle contraction, reaction coupling, and nerve conduction. After knowing the structure of ATP, it is important to know how it is hydrolyzed. ATP is converted into ADP through an enzyme ATPase. This reaction releases energy as the high energy bonds between the phosphate groups are broken down to release a phosphate group and form ADP. This reaction is known as condensation. Consider ATP as a charged battery, which when combines with water releases all of its energy and becomes a dead battery known as ADP. Once this happens, the uncharged battery must be charged again by providing energy in the form of phosphate. This reaction is known as phosphorylation. Remember, to form ADP, we took the phosphate group out of the ATP molecule. And now, to make ATP again, we need to put that phosphate group. This is known as phosphorylation. And the formation of ADP is known as dephosphorylation. During sternness exercise, a person needs more amount of energy. This energy is provided by ATP by breaking two of the phosphate groups to form AMP, known as adenine monophosphate. The analogy can be extended further because at first the batteries need to be made in the factories. Some are rechargeable like ATP. When these batteries are made in factories, some of the energy is needed to manufacture them. Likewise, ATP is made using the energy from the oxidation of glucose during respiration. Since this energy to add phosphate comes from the oxidation, so this process is known as oxidative phosphorylation, which will be discussed in our next video. Till then, remember oxidative phosphorylation is the last step of respiration. During photosynthesis, ATP is made using light energy. During both these processes, the factory of ATP production is mitochondria. Earlier we learned that reaction coupling is the function of ATP. Now let's discuss how the production of sucrose is linked with the hydrolysis of ATP. In the uncoupled reaction, you will see that the glucose combines with fructose to form sucrose. But the coupling reaction of the same substrate uses ATP. The first reaction is dephosphorylation, in which glucose combines with the molecule of ATP, where the ATP molecule loses its phosphate group to form glucose P and an ADP molecule. The second step, glucose P combines with fructose to form sucrose and releases the phosphate group again. The synthesis of sucrose from glucose and fructose requires energy of 27 kJ, while the ADP production releases energy up to 30 kJ. So the overall reaction justifies that the ATP hydrolysis can release energy to pay for the synthesis of glucose. That's it for today's video. Thanks for watching and do comment which topic you want to see in our next videos. Do not forget to subscribe.